Okay, so good morning again. Yeah, so I hope uh, you are all getting used to the number of derivations that we are doing so far. I think this entire course we will be uh, doing such derivations and finding similarity solutions. Okay, so it is not so difficult uh, except that you should get used to the notations and things like that. Okay, so tensor notation is one of them which we introduced uh, yesterday. I think uh, if you have time, you please read up a little bit on the tensorial notation. It is not that difficult to understand. Um, also, uh, you should have some basic knowledge of uh, solution to ordinary differential equations because in all the similarity solution problems, we will convert the partial differential equations into an equivalent uh, ordinary differential equation and find the similarity solution. So that has to be done numerically and uh, I expect I will be giving some assignments uh, where you have to solve those ODEs uh, numerically by some techniques. Okay, so otherwise if uh, we just stop there and give you the solution, you may not appreciate uh, exactly how the solution has come and it will all look uh, too uh, mathematical. Okay, unless you do it yourself, you will not appreciate uh, the solution process. Uh, so we will uh, look into the second law of uh, for a closed close system. So we were uh, till now deriving the conservation equations. Uh, we were uh, looking at two different approaches. We started from a Cartesian coordinate uh, control volume and derived. The other one we had a coordinate free representation, applied a Reynolds transport theorem to a closed system and converted the closed system uh, rate of change of properties to uh, rate of change with respect to an open system and that, that is another way of deriving in a coordinate free representation. So after we have uh, looked at the uh, first law, it is also very important to look at uh, the second law because as we all know, most of the times we stop with the first law without too much of botheration to the second law. But if you look at any practical heat exchanger device, entropy generation is very important. You know, There are a lot of irreversibilities within the system uh, and we have to quantify to some extent uh, the extent of these irreversibilities and we should also identify what are the sources of the irreversibilities. Okay, so that is where we are going to apply the second law um, and we are going to uh, derive a conservation of what is called as conservation of entropy. Okay, just like you have conservation of mass, momentum and energy. So there is also a possibility of deriving conservation of entropy and that is what uh, we are uh, looking at here. So we start with applying a Clausius inequality for a closed system okay. and uh, if you express this in, in the form of a rate equation. So you know that uh, the total derivative d, ds by dt should be greater than or equal to 1 by t into the differential amount of uh, heat transferred. Okay, so I'll just uh, represent this as delta q dot. Okay. Now let let us apply the Reynolds transport theorem to express this uh, total derivative for a control mass uh, in, in, with respect to the partial derivatives in a control volume. So you can uh, define a property called a specific entropy okay? and in the Reynolds transport theorem the alpha is a property per unit volume right. So then that, that can be expressed as rho times the specific entropy okay. So we can expand this using the Reynolds transport theorem like this. Now the right hand side applies for an open system okay. So now for an open system therefore if you substitute this Reynolds transport theorem expression into 1, so this is your uh, equation which uh, defines the conservation of entropy for an open system. Okay, So this is nothing but conservation of entropy for open system Okay, or you can also if you do not uh, want to look at this as a con conservation of entropy you can also look, uh, think this as an entropy balance okay entropy balance equation okay so now what we are going to do all the surface integrals can be converted to volume integrals by gauss divergence theorem and uh, therefore we can further put this uh, i can take the integral over v out so d by dt rho s dv plus 
this will be again a divergence operation right here this will be del dot rho s v okay and I am going to bring this to the left hand side here so this will be again minus uh, del del q okay so I, this is actually a vector right here so I am just going to give this vector notation okay so this is all integrated over the differential volume because I have already applied the Gauss divergence theorem so on the right hand side that, sh that should be equal to the rate of generation of entropy okay so therefore I can I can also uh, say that uh, if I express this in uh, okay or or may, maybe I can also look at this way I want to look at the entropy generation for the entire volume so I can also bring this inside minus a s dot gen okay dv equal to 0 right so that I can separate out the integrand okay and uh, write a finally a partial differential equation okay so strictly speaking this entropy generation is per uh, uh, unit volume here rate of uh, rate of entropy generation per unit volume so if I can multiply by delta v okay so I can say this can be multiplied by dv okay so then I can put this on the left hand side group all the terms together and that can be equal to 0 therefore the integrand has to be 0 so then this will give me my s dot gen should be equal to d by dt of uh, rho s dv plus this which I am going to write in terms of uh, the total derivative notation which is rho ds by dt okay minus uh, del dot delta q I think this should be delta q by t okay I think I omitted by t because that, that is there in the Clausius inequality okay so this should be del so this divergence operator is on this entire term okay so so this is how I finally can calculate uh, the entropy rate of entropy generation now provided I, I can also expand this particular divergence uh, operator on uh, del q by t so I can rewrite this a little bit so I can express this as s dot gen is equal to rho ds by dt plus 1 by t so I can expand this I can split it up into I can take 1 by t out del dot uh, uh, I can write this as del q so that is 1 the other term is 1 by t square uh, del q dot del t okay right so because this uh, this is a gradient operator so gradient uh, this is a divergence operator on a vector so this has to be a scalar so therefore you should make sure that uh, you only get scalar operators out of so this is again a vector dotted with the uh, vector you you basically get a scalar here okay so you make sure that the final resulting operation also is consistent with the original operator is that clear the splitting up is clear okay so I am just uh, so if you if you have a gradient the same way that you write you have to ha write the same way for a divergence operator also only thing you should make sure the resulting operator is also scale giving you a scalar okay so therefore uh, now what I can do here uh, so now I am going to evoke uh, the Gibbs theorems one of the Gibbs theorems if you can remember so for a closed system again uh, you know that du is equal to tds minus pdv okay so I am going to write as pd into uh, 1 by rho okay so this is coming from straight from your first law right where you substitute uh, tds for delta q and you have pdv work okay so this I can uh, uh, write in terms of the rate equation 
and you can tell me how this should look if I want to uh, write ds by dt okay so if I if I express ds by dt so I can write this as du by dt so I can take 1 by t on the other side <coughs> minus so this should be if you can express this as uh, d rho by dt so what should be the remaining term rho square and t right so I am, I am taking this t dividing it all the side so I am now going to multiply this by rho okay throughout so that this we can be written as uh, oh so this that should be a p here p by rho t right so so this is a little bit of manipulation to suit my convenience here because now I have to find some relation for rho ds by dt so I am just expressing this from the Gibbs equation okay I am connecting that to the change in the internal energy and the change in density with respect to time now if you look at incompressible flows okay for that this has to be 0 right so there is no change in density with respect to time therefore the change in the uh, entropy has to be directly the change in the internal energy of the system that is directly linked there so let us also express the first law now if you write the first law <coughs> So you write d rho du by dt should be equal to minus del dot q okay uh, plus u phi okay so I am writing in the final coordinate free representation okay so instead of saying del dot q you can also say del dot uh, del q uh, in fact if you if you want to uh, maybe rewrite to just avoid some confusion you can also write this in terms of uh, uh, yeah okay just to avoid some confusion you can express this as q instead of del q here so that finally it is consistent with that maybe you can do this small change okay. okay so both are consistent all right so therefore what I am going to do now is to substitute for uh, rho du by dt from this expression into this and this I am going to substitute into this okay so the resulting expression will be s dot gen will be so this will be basically rho ds by dt is nothing but rho by t du by dt which will be minus del dot q by t plus mu phi by t okay so that is this term plus you have these two terms right plus del dot q by t minus 1 by t square q dot del t okay so these two terms cancel off so therefore your uh, final expression for s dot gen turns out to be if you you can also now substitute uh, the Fourier's law for q as k delta t and uh, express this as minus okay so this is minus of q dot which, which is again minus k delta t so that will become k delta t square divided by t square okay plus mu by t phi okay so therefore the components of uh, entropy generation are two so one is coming from the um, entropy generation due to the conduction part okay so within the system the conduction of heat the other is due to the viscous dissipation okay so this part till here I think uh, it is straightforward only after this we apply the Gibbs law and just manipulate a little bit so that we can uh, eliminate some of these uh, total derivative terms okay so finally we write everything in terms of uh, 
the heat transfer by conduction and the viscous dissipation. So now there, there was this person called Adrian Bejan I think uh, there is one textbook also which you are referring convective heat transfer okay. So he came up with a very ingenious method that he wanted to uh, give a non-dimensional number which is actually referred to as the Bejan number okay. So this is called Bejan number so notation is given as B. He wanted to look at the contribution of uh, the entropy generation by means of uh, conduction okay as a fraction of the total entropy which is generated okay. So that he has uh, taken this term on the numerator divided by this entire thing on the denominator. Okay. So this is uh, called as Bejan number in fact the idea of uh, entropy generation due to heat transfer was his, was his idea so this derivation actually is done by him and uh, there is also a paper in uh, 1990s you know with a student where he has uh, derived this expression for heat transfer irreversibility due to heat transfer okay and uh, I think the Bejan number was uh, credited to I mean it was uh, basically given due to his contribution for uh, uh, for this work particularly and this measures if your Bejan number is some uh, value say about 2 it tells you that the majority of uh, entropy generation is through by conduction okay and if it is much much lesser than 2 it tells the majority of entropy generation is through viscous dissipation okay. So basically this can be plotted just like you plot your isotherms and heat flux lines you can plot the entropy generation due to each of these and you can visualize and see how it looks okay it's a very useful tool and I mean and you can see where the uh, in which location in a particular system your entropy generation is by the conduction part and where it is by viscous dissipation and if you can probably try to uh, reduce the viscous dissipation by some method so that will also reduce the entropy generation yeah both are dominant kind of both are equally important. Okay, so any questions I think I, I wanted to just uh, finish the governing equations therefore I wanted to touch upon the uh, second law also apart from the first law which uh, you are already familiar okay. So I think many of the textbooks do not uh, talk about the second law conservation and things like entropy generation much okay. So any if uh, any other questions uh, on this any doubts any anything that requires some clarity or. Is that okay? Okay, fine. So then uh, we will proceed to uh, a new topic uh, now. Still, we are in the introductory portion of this uh, course where we are deriving the conservation equations and so on. So you have seen that uh, the Navier-Stokes equations are quite complicated. So we cannot solve them analytically except when we are making some approximations. Now we can also uh, bypass this and we can introduce. Uh, another uh, set of equations which can be solved in place of Navier-Stokes equations especially for two dimensional flows and two dimensional incompressible flows okay. So for 2D incompressible you know we have to solve if you solve the Navier-Stokes we need uh, equations for U, V and P okay. So U, V, P and if you are solving energy again temperature okay now we do not have a separate equation for pressure. Okay, we have uh, equation for U and V and continuity equation which, which is like a default equation. So therefore uh, numerically there are some techniques to overcome this uh, hurdle where we construct an artificial pressure equation and things like that. If you want to overcome that we can rewrite the Navier-Stokes equation into what is called as a stream function vorticity formulation okay and that is uh, very useful when you are looking at 2D incompressible flows okay there you have only two variables two equations you can solve that straight away and the equation solution is also slightly simpler than solving the Navier-Stokes okay. So we will just uh, quickly derive those uh, formulation today and in fact uh, in the project that you are supposed to do you will be using those uh, 2D stream function vorticity equations with the energy you will be solving them numerically okay I will send you some reference papers and uh, you will apply that to a problem of natural convection 
okay so now as, as in a natural convection will be covered you can because this is a nice rectangular cavity so the taking a, you know a finite differences will be much easier all right okay so we will do that now so the next topic will be for 2D so this 2D is the approximation that is required okay we cannot write this in 3D again okay 2D incompressible flows okay so let us write down the Navier-Stokes equations first and from there we will uh, try to derive the stream function vorticity equations so from the continuity equation so you have to tell me for uh, 2D incompressible flows what is the continuity equation let us assume a Cartesian coordinate system hmm? okay so du dx plus dv dy equal to 0 so now the complicated equations slowly will get simplified you know, as and when we uh, go through the solutions okay uh, and the x momentum du by dt plus will be equal to minus what about density density has to be divided right plus dynamic or kinematic kinematic this is your Laplacian operator right so and similarly your y momentum which will be dv So we will also write your energy equation after we derive the stream function vorticity formulation we will quickly go back to the energy equation and simplify that okay so what is your uh, 2D incompressible energy equation we can directly write for temperature hmm? okay plus is equal to alpha because that is k by rho cp which is nothing but the thermal diffusivity okay the thermal diffusivity alpha plus okay so now I am going to neglect the viscous dissipation now okay I do not want to put too many terms into this so I can safely neglect the viscous dissipation okay so this is neglecting okay so now this is more familiar to you you have been working with these equations in uh, in your earlier courses uh, now what we have to do we have to think a little bit see there is a pressure term in the, uh, the momentum equations and we want to somehow eliminate it because as you know that uh, we do not have a separate equation for pressure and when we want numerically solve that we want to simplify this problem so how can we probably do that take derivative with respect to y here respect to x subtract these two right so that will eliminate this pressure derivative term so exactly that is what we are going to do okay so we will differentiate x momentum with respect to y okay and uh, so I am going to say differentiate y momentum with respect to x minus differentiate 
x momentum with respect to y okay so if you do that so you can group these uh, two terms the temporal term you can say d by dt of uh, so you can write this as dv by dx minus du by dy is that right okay so i am taking d by dt common so i am differentiating with respect to x minus differentiating this with respect to y all right so the other terms uh, you get lot of terms here because now if i say i am going to differentiate this with respect to y so i have to split it up again right so this will be minus you have to tell me now so this is d by dy of u du by dx okay so i can write this as u into d square u by dy dx minus yeah du du by dy into du by dx okay similarly this term can also be expanded that will give you minus uh, v into d square u by dy square right minus du by dx uh, into dv by dy this should be dv by dy into du by dy I am sorry okay let me check all the terms again yeah okay so the same thing now i am going to do differentiate the y momentum with respect to x okay so this minus this right so these terms will be positive here so plus you have uh, du by dy into dv by dx plus you have uh, uh, u into d square v by uh, dx square plus uh, I am going to differentiate with respect to x into dv by dy plus v into d square v by dx dy okay so when I differentiate this with respect to x this and subtract they are going to cancel okay on the right hand side I will have nu into minus d cube u by dy dx square minus d cube u by dy cube plus so I will have uh, these two terms right here d cube v by dx cube plus d cube v by dx dy square yes one two three four five six this one do u by do x yes you are right because we are differentiating with respect to x so all the other terms are correct please uh, do this and check once hmm? So I am now going to group these terms together in some particular fashion and we will see that that grouping will help in uh, uh, reducing we can actually define a new function which can be substituted for those uh, grouped terms. So I am just going to group like this so you take common uh, and uh, what are all the terms common to you so you have this term you have this term so I can write this d square v by dx square minus d square u by dy dx so this are the terms common to you okay so again plus v now you have to tell me which terms I can group do square v by do x do y minus, minus all right so we have somehow one two three four okay so four terms we have taken care and uh, before that okay I am going to add the temp temporal derivative term 
so that is d by dt of dv by dx minus du by dy plus these terms right so this term is also taken care now we have 1 2 3 4 four terms which are still on the left hand side that have to be grouped together so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take dv by dx common okay so if i take dv by dx so that means uh, this is common so du by dx plus dv by dy which is nothing but two dimensional continuity which is automatically satisfied okay this is a nice trick to eliminate all the unnecessary terms okay plus next i'm going to take du so this is actually minus du by dy out so du by dy so you have du by dx and dv by dy so that will also be satisfying continuity so this goes this also goes on the right hand side i can just uh, group them as d cube v by dx cube minus d cube u by uh, dx square dy okay so i am grouping these two terms these two terms okay plus d cube uh, v by dy square dx okay minus d cube u by dy cube all right so i'm just uh, grouping them now what i'm going to do is to introduce a function called the vorticity which you are all familiar right so how do we define vorticity many of you can recollect from your incompressible flows hmm? in fact you can get a clue from the terms that we have grouped hmm. dv by dx minus yeah exactly okay now you can see why we have grouped those terms because they are going to be directly in terms of the vorticity that we have defined and now we are going to take derivatives and check it will come exactly to those terms okay so for example if you now take the derivative of vorticity with respect to x now you please tell me what the term should be that should be exactly the first term on the spatial derivative term right so that is del square v by del x square minus del square u by del y del, del x okay so d omega dy should be what d square v by dx dy <coughs> minus d square u by dy square okay that is this term right here okay so now if you take second derivative d square omega by dx square can you tell me what the second derivative will be okay so this is uh, this term right here okay so regarding this rho cube v by okay and this is rho cube u by rho y cube okay that is this term right here okay so therefore you find that our grouping all these terms makes sense you can uh, write them in terms of the vorticity and its derivatives therefore i'm going to substitute in terms of vorticity so this will be d omega by dt plus u d omega by dx plus v d omega by dy should be equal to nu into so this is my 
governing equation for vorticity okay or you can also say that this is the vorticity conservation equation so have you derived this before earlier in compressible flows vorticity okay so this is a this is an important uh, equation and it simplifies because now your pressure terms are not appearing anymore okay now still we are not done because you have simplified the momentum equations okay but uh, the thing is still we you have your u and v velocities appearing here okay and we have to somehow eliminate them ha huh? stream function so how are we going to do we have to define a function which automatically satisfies the continuity equation and uh, therefore you don't have to again solve for continuity separately right so therefore what is that function which does it that's a stream function okay so from the stream function you can calculate your velocities for example u is related to your stream function as d psi by dy and v is minus d psi dx so naturally you can see that du by dx plus dv by dy will be zero so the stream function is automatically satisfying continuity so you can plug in for u and v in terms of the stream function and the other thing the stream function should also satisfy this equation because this is the this is how the vorticity is defined and vorticity is related to the velocity terms the velocity derivatives so therefore the stream function should make sure that it satisfies this particular definition of vorticity so if you substitute for stream function into that so what do you get so your omega will be so if i take uh, dv by dx this is minus d square psi by dx square and du by dy minus so minus of d square psi by right so you have you can now substitute this in terms of the stream function therefore you have eliminated the velocities okay so this is your equation number 1 so this is the conservation of vorticity equation number 2 is now since you have introduced stream function you have to solve for stream function okay and that is uh, done by means of second equation which relates your uh, stream function to vorticity okay so this is your second equation so now you have two equations two unknowns right one for psi and the other for omega so this is much better to solve rather than the navier stokes correct okay so where you have to solve for three equations and you don't have an equation for pressure so that's for that, that's why it's very popular technique for numerical solution to two dimensional incompressible flows okay most of the journal papers that you take uh, for two 2d incompressible flows still until recently okay where, where you do, don't didn't have a powerful computing facility to solve the full navier stokes equations uh, they were employing the stream function vorticity technique okay so and this is what you are going to try out also now the same thing in energy equation if you substitute okay so apart from the uh the flow field you can also calculate for temperature so the energy equation becomes you can substitute for u again in terms of stream function so this is your energy conservation okay so you solve for three equations for three unknowns omega psi and temperature okay so these are the equations that you exactly have to solve in your particular project and uh, i'll be giving the papers you have to apply the corresponding boundary conditions to solve this problem so for a particular problem you have to do it and then you can uh, you can probably look at steady state solution where you don't have to consider the time derivative okay only the spatial derivative and you can do this iteratively so there are couple of techniques like gauss seidel or gauss jacobi iterative techniques which you can do it and you can use finite difference methods simple finite differences to basically discretize these uh, uh, derivative terms all right 
Okay, so with that, uh, I think most of the conservation equations we have seen, and also different variants of the conservation equations. What I'm going to do now is to slowly get into the uh, theme of this course, which we are going to apply for uh, both external and the internal flows. Okay, now we have to make some approximations to the Navier-Stokes equations when we apply that to external flows. We cannot solve the Navier-Stokes as it is. Okay, so these approximations are called the boundary layer approximations as far as the external flows are concerned and uh, before doing that first we will try to non-dimensionalize the Navier-Stokes equation. We will uh, try to define some non-dimensional numbers. We will see what non-dimensional numbers are governing the flow and heat transfer parameters and we will also identify the regimes based on these uh, non-dimensional numbers. And finally, when we go to boundary layers, we have to use these non-dimensional numbers to make certain approximations. Okay, so once the boundary layer equations are derived, from there we will start our process of solving for different configurations. Okay, so we will. Uh, I'll just introduce you a little bit. We have some more time, uh, about seven, eight minutes. So I'm going to talk about the different parameters, uh, different variables, and how we are going to non-dimensionalize them. Okay, so I think this is probably familiar to you because you have done this uh, earlier in your incompressible flows and also advanced heat and mass. So very, very quickly we will go over it and uh, you can yourself try to non-dimensionalize. I am going to write down only the final non-dimensional equations. Okay. So hereafter we will be dealing only with uh, incompressible flows and that, that also in two dimensions. Okay. So all the complicated uh, uh, terms will be dropped off and only we will retain uh, terms in these two dimensions. So 2D incompressible in fact I should not have erased the Navier Stokes so the same thing applies here and anyway I will just do it write it quickly again I am going to also include the pressure term okay. So here I am what I am doing is 2D also incompressible and steady. So this is the approximation that I am uh, going to bring here because after we non-dimensionalize and apply this to boundary layer flows we are pretty much going to do this for steady state solutions. Okay. So we will stick on to this uh, particular form throughout. So all your most of your solutions will be for 2D incompressible and steady state. And also we are including the viscous dissipation here to non-dimensionalize and see what kind of non-dimensional numbers come out. Okay, suppose you take any uh, flow, say past an airfoil or past your uh, flat plate. Okay, so you have your free stream, which is described by your free stream velocity and temperature, and uh, you can also maintain the surface of the airfoil. Okay, at an isothermal condition such that your T wall is constant and let us say the characteristic dimension of this particular airfoil is given by the chord length uh, which is L alright. So this is these are some of the variables that you have fixed you know you have your U infinity U, T infinity defined okay the geometry is well defined and also you are fixing the boundary temperature to an isothermal condition. So with these parameters how are we going to non-dimensionalize so the, the as, far, as far as the coordinate system is concerned okay let us take a coordinate system x and y okay like this which are along the chord length and normal to the chord. So I am going to define a non-dimensional coordinate system capital X 
which is x by L. Similarly, capital Y will be Y by L. And uh, as far as the velocities are concerned, I'm going to introduce capital U. Okay, which is what U by U infinity. Similarly, capital V is equal to V by uh, U infinity. Okay. Now coming to pressure. Okay, so velocities coordinates are done. So I'm just going to introduce a capital P, which is equal to the small p dimensional p divided by. So how do we non-dimensionalize the pressure? Okay, so I'm going to cut the half term because it doesn't make much difference. Rho infinity, u infinity square. Okay, so the free stream density is rho infinity. All right, and uh, finally coming to the temperature. I'll define a non-dimensional temperature theta such that uh, at at the wall the value of the non-dimensional temperature equal to one, and in the free stream away, so the value should be zero. So how do I non-dimensionalize that? T minus T infinity by T wall minus T infinity. Okay, so that at the location where at boundary T equal to T wall, this becomes one. And at the free stream, somewhere that theta goes to zero. All right. So with this, uh, I just write the final equation. You can, in fact, derive this and check for yourself. If you substitute these non-dimensional variables into the dimensional Navier-Stokes equations, so you are now going to tell me. So we'll write down only the final version. So what will happen to the continuity? Hmm? This is right. I'm just substituting for the dimensional in terms of the non-dimensional variables there. All right, they cancel out everywhere. Okay. As far as the momentum equation is concerned, u du by dx. Plus v du by dy. I'm writing all in non-dimensional terms. Is equal to minus d capital P by dx plus something which you have to tell me what it is. D square u by dx square plus d square v by dy square. Okay. The same thing for the. So this is capital U dv dx plus v dv dy minus. So these are all in non-dimensional variables. So you have to check and tell me what terms should be there. And similarly, finally, you have d theta dx. Plus, I'm going to introduce a non-dimensional viscous dissipation V star. So you have to fill in the blank. Uh, how? What are the terms that are going to appear here? Okay. So what? What should be the term right here? Huh? Reynolds number. So if your Reynolds number is very large, so what happens? If it, this term is more important than the convective term. Is that correct? Hmm? It should be one by Reynolds number, right? One by R e based on the length. So where your R e L is nothing but rho uh, u infinity L by nu. Correct. Similarly, the same thing comes here. One by R e L. Now, what should be the term here? Just uh, half minute. We are done. Okay. So I'm just going to give it. You please check it. One by R e Prandtl number. Okay, where your Prandtl number is equal to mu C P by K, which is also mu by alpha. Okay. And finally, here I'm just going to introduce a non-dimensional number, which probably you have not encountered. 
So this is going to be what is called as Eckert number by Reynolds number here where your Eckert number is defined as uh, u infinity square by Cp into T wall minus T infinity okay. So what I give you as a homework is to please substitute all that carefully and check whether we arrive at this non-dimensional formulation okay. I think you can do that directly you can see that, that this comes directly straight away only this combination and this combination you have to check again alright. So we will stop and we will meet on Tuesday okay. Huh? We will start with the boundary layer approximation.